so on SG1 coming at ya for another Star Trek official Starships collection review. Yes, it's getting easy and easy to say that. Um, this week, issue number 16, the Ferengi Marauder, which is, you know, some like it, some don't. I'm kind of, meh, it's a meh ship. Always has been for me, I was never really a big fan of this ship, but, you know. So, specifications, Ferengi, operated by the Ferengi Alliance, class the Cora, length 366 metres, crew 450, top speed, what, 9.6 approximately. Uh, sorry, I've got a chest infection at the moment, and I'm a bit sniffly and uh, and wheezy, and so if I cough, I'll try and edit the coughs out, but just be warned. Uh, top speed 9.6 approximately. Weaponry, directed energy weapons, forward missile launcher, aft electromagnetic pulse weapon. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so yeah, there we got a nice CG render of the Ferengi Marauder there. Um, it goes into sort of the history um, of the ship. And then we've got the history of its first appearance in Next Generation in the episode The Last Outpost. Um, sort of brief encounters and stuff like that. Yeah, we've got the um, got the tech specs, which uh, pretty cool. I always like this section. I was like, I was like, there's multiple ones, which is pretty, you know. Oh, that got a bit soft oh. Then we've got the um, the Ferengi uh, creating the Ferengi for Star Trek. Now, the Ferengi were going to be the Next Generation's new big bad. They were going to be the new Klingons. But they failed. They ultimately failed because of their comedic appearance. You know, they're funny looking, they're quite short, the whole profit motive thing. It failed. It, it, then, you know, the Ferengi only ever showed up for um, sort of comic relief episodes and things like that. But it wasn't until Deep Space Nine where they actually fleshed them out with Quark, Nog and Rom and Moogie. They really fleshed the Ferengi out. Instead of being like a one-note, you know, joke. Um, they actually fleshed them out a bit better. Um, so yeah, they're, I mean, because of the disaster of the next generation, the Romulans were ultimately brought in. And then the, uh, then the Borg, which is always a good thing. So yeah, and then we've got here, we've got more history, um, you know, we've got, you know, more history of the show, of like, you know, the comic appearance, and even that guy there, Armin Shimmerman, who would later go on to play Quark, and we've got some de design elements of what the Ferengi could have looked like, which is pretty cool. Um, and then, again, my favourite section, designing the Marada. I love this section. I, mean, I love the uh, pre, you know, the, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, the uh, design sketches, the, um, what the ship's going to look like. I always like those. And then the, um, filming it, like, designing the, under, you know, filming the undersection and stuff like that, and all these different views, which is always cool. I mean, look at the detail under there. It's pretty cool. I keep saying pretty cool because my vocabulary is short, my brain, I can't concentrate. Um, and then we get the on-screen section, showing you where they appeared. Um, first appearance was the last outpost in Next Generation, and then they solely appeared in Next Generation, and one episode of Voyager called Inside Man. Um, so yeah... That's pretty much it, really, um, as the magazine goes. Um, again, Frenny Mariah. And the usual usual spiel and that other stuff. Come on, there we go. Onto the model itself. And we just take it off there. And not bad. Not bad. Not a bad little model. Um, it's nicely detailed on the top. See all the lights and stuff, all the shuttle bays. Um, you know, all the markings and stuff like that. Now, the bottom section is very lacklustre. They haven't even bothered to just dry, you know, dry brush some of the details out on the bottom. It's a very drastic... I mean, look, the, the top section is very nice. 
you know, the aft section's very nice. This section is very, 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 very nicely rendered. It's, you know, there's lots of detail, there's lots of panel lines and stuff like that. And then on the bottom, it's just completely plain. It's like they forgot to paint it, and I'm a little bit disappointed at that. You know, just a dry, a, a, a dry brush across the bottom would have been nice. One redeeming feature, however, it does have light piping. Um, I don't know if you can see that. So the nail cells, it has a little bit of light, light piping. There you go, you can see it there. See, these are the Buzzard collectors here, and these are the Watt grills, so which is pretty cool. So you've got the weapons pod on each side there. You've got the torpedo launcher here. Uh, deflector dishes here. But yeah, um, it's not bad. It's not bad. I mean, like I said, the top section is very, very, very nicely rendered. Just a shame about the bottom section. It really is a shame. And because it comes with a stand, you get the uh, clear connecting part. And on the bottom, it says... Ferengi Marauder. However, the term Marauder never actually appears in the show. I do believe the term comes from um, the v one of the first Next Generation model kits. Because they had... Um, well, the, the, one of the first ones was the Enterprise D, which I had, which sadly got destroyed a number of years ago. Um, I spent ages building that as well. And it, and it was one of the... like first Star Trek things I ever got off my parents I mean my dad spent months building it it was lovely, it was painted up brilliantly but sadly in a move to a different house it got destroyed, like severely destroyed, not just like parts fell out, I mean it, it was unrepairable so it had to go I was, I was gutted Um, yeah and the other one of the other model, model kits that came out was a three alien set which had a Klingon bird of prey, a Romulan warbird and a Ferengi decorer and um, I believe on that model kit was the first time that the term Marauder had, had been used. You know, because it's like Klingon Bed of Prey, Romulan Warbird, and then he was just like Ferengi. I think there was struggling for something, they couldn't just call it Ferengi Ship, so Ferengi Marauder. It just kind of works. I kind of like it. And there's only two ships that were ever named. One was the Crete Cha, and the other one was the Craton. So, Krita Cha, it's quite a good name. So, and you connect it to the model thusly, you get the uh, the prongs that way, and then you get the, it connects to these sections here, and then you do it like so, and boom, there you go, on, on its stand. Flat, all the other ones are angled upwards, but this one's flat. But, you know, what are you gonna know? Um, actually, not bad, you know. Shame about the underside, I keep mentioning it, but it is, it is a. A bit of a letdown, because considering how nice the top part is, and the bottom part is just just not even painted. They've even left out the Ferengi symbols as well, because there's supposed to be two Ferengi symbols on, you know, one there, one there, and then one there, and one there as well. But you know, just lackluster. I might dry, I might dry brush that anyway. Just get a nice sort of black that matches this this black on the front, and then just give it just a quick dry rub dry brush and I think I'll pick out some of those details a bit better so that's me that's um, the Ferengi Marauder and I will uh, catch you later, bye for now